when you go talk to the rune carver, when you meet him, uh, he has a line uh, that uh, time is not a construct of death. And that's true. Uh, if we think about it, what is time a construct of? It's a construct of order. And we on Azeroth, when we're there, we understand the passage of time, uh, much like we do in the real world, uh, because of the influence of the Titans and beings of order. Uh, but when you're in those cosmic realms that are far away from the realms of order, time loses its meaning. And so it's not so much that there's a like, well, it's X number of days versus Y number over here. It's just that the Shadowlands are about eternities and about just kind of losing yourself in those threads of fate. And so it's just that time doesn't really mean anything there. And so you can have it perceived differently by different characters that could be in the same circumstance, but it's just the effect of, of what they're going through that really determines how they perceive it. Enjoying you know, physics and stuff like yeah. that, IRL, it is mm. interesting as how this applies to World of Warcraft. Yeah. Yeah, I think about a movie like Arrival, and I don't want to, you know, be dropping hot spoilers on you, but a part of that is like the aliens language is the way that it is because of the way that they perceive time. So I think as this stuff pertains to like World of Warcraft and time, it's always complicated by how Warlords of Draenor existed, but yes. I think Warlords of Draenor has no connection to any of the way that Steve talked about time yeah, because yeah. Warlords of Draenor is basically just nipping a bud off the timeline and then collapsing it back in. Yeah. Something along those lines. Mm -hmm. So with that, learning that time is a construct of order, it's tricky because like we think about space time, we think about general relativity as mm -hmm. the, you know, the frameworks through which we try to understand these things. Yeah. Um, so yes who knows maybe matthew mcconaughey and co go up and do yeah. their interstellar but it's the warcraft cosmos and maybe yeah. it does not work the way that you would expect um so yeah, that is interesting yeah i'm trying to think of how they can actually use this because obviously when we first knew we we're going to the shadowlands and we knew about the salinar salazar's uh line we're like okay this is the perfect time for them to do this big time skip yeah where they can go and we can come back and they can change the whole world but i'm actually thinking if it's the way he's talking about how it's perceived differently by characters based on their events, mm -hmm. I think this will be used for localized time skips. Yeah. This will be used. So, uh, as an example, uh, the one I'm thinking of is Veranda. Veranda is clearly having yes. Veranda is clearly having some problems. Yeah. But she's effectively immortal, as in enough, even though we lost it. But let's not talk about that. It's like they they can box her off and go. All right, she's. We'll throw her into this pit, and yeah. then six weeks later she'll come out. But all hyperbolic time chamber, she'll have sat with like the night warrior power for ten thousand years in that pit, and come out being like a like complete version of who's accepted. Yeah, or something like that with other characters who seriously need time to pass. I, I think that localized thing. I mean, it, it does line up with what we experience in the Maw intro, right? We meet yeah. Jaina there, mm -hmm. and for Jaina she had experienced a humongous amount of time, yeah. it seemed. But of course, we just went in. Now, being, you know, humans who exist in the actual universe, what we then think is, you know, we're thinking about general relativity. We're thinking, yeah. okay, in the same way, if I am parked up beside a black hole, if I am in here, you know, my clock moves by one hour, but back in Azeroth, years pass. Mm -hmm. It's actually not like that. It yeah. made it so that the way the time works is such that for Jaina's experience and what the Jailer puts her through in the Shadowlands, which is basically a place where time doesn't humongously mm. uh, matter and is very loose, um, yeah. then yeah, she can experience that in a localized fashion. So to your point, yeah. What the hell has Tyrande been doing? Like, are we going to see her just having went through an absolutely harrowing, crazy experience yeah. as she's been lost in Torghast, and who knows how much time she's passed for her. Yeah, I mean, obviously the the immediate option there is for torture, as did the yeah. is like, if you want to give someone a bad time, they'll have a bad time for 20,000 years in an instant. That's yeah. like that Black Mirror episode that continually haunts me. That is a fucking... <laughs> oh, that's a terrifying Black Mirror episode. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, but... Season one or yeah. two, I think. Season one, I think. But yeah. th there's other ways they can... I think there's other ways they could possibly do it to have interesting characters that are flitting about yeah like because obviously we go for what if it's what if the experience is longer than ours but then there's also a lot of fun that can have with ex characters who are ex whose experience is shorter than ours yeah kind of kind of how chromie 
speaks to us like, oh yeah, when is this our first meeting? Or have I met you a thousand times? I whatever it gets complicated. I can we see need that. more Chromey content. Yeah, I can see that with like fun little characters for side, side content. Yeah. As always, Steve the newser gives us a lot of things <laughs> uh, to talk about. So good man, yeah. Steve. Let's see what else he's got to say. <laughs>